Hello everyone and welcome to the seventh part of this video dedicated to the fractionation section of the FCC. In the first six parts, we recalled some elements about the reaction section of the FCC. Then we spoke about the main frac, and we also did a material balance on the column, and we saw how to produce a fuel gas cut, a LPG cut, and several gasoline cuts. It's now time to look at the fractionation section of the heaviest cuts. The first cut that we will recover is called the LLCO for light, light cycle oil. This trim will be typically cut at about 300 degrees C. For the same reasons as those described in the MOOC dedicated to the atmospheric distillation, a side stripper will be installed to correct the flash point of the product. When I say correct, I mean increase the flash point. The flow rate of this stream will be typically around 14 tons per hour of LLCO. This stream will be cooled down from 207 degrees C to ambient temperature in several heat exchangers. Lower in the tower, we will produce a HLCO cut, which is called heavy light cycle oil, or which is the heavy part of the LCO. This stream flow rate will be around 14 tons per hour as well. Same remark as for the LLCO regarding the installation of a side stripper. This stream is cooled down from 235 degrees C to ambient temperature with the help of several heat exchangers as well. As far as the slurry cut is concerned, there is a particularity in the FCC main fractionation tower. As a reminder, the feed from the reaction section enters the main fractionation tower in 100% gas form. This gas feed will be desuperheated and partially condensed with the use of a slurry pump around. Indeed, a high amount of slurry is recirculated from the tower bottoms back to the tower. In between, this stream of slurry has been cooled down. This is what we call a pump around. This relative cold liquid is then used to desuperheat the gas feed and condensed a heavy part of this feed. A typical duty of 20 gigacalories per hour is extracted from the tower bottoms thanks to this pump around implementation. With this heat, we can preheat the feed to the reactor. Remember, in the MOOC dedicated to the reaction section, we said that 12 gigacalories per hour were needed to heat the feed up to 220 degrees C before injecting it into the reactor. We can also use these calories to produce steam at a rather high pressure level due to the high temperature of the slurry. In general, we do both. I mean preheat the feed and produce steam. And sometimes we even use these calories anywhere else in the process. Finally, the slurry is cooled down from the main fractionation bottom's temperature, I mean 360 degrees C, down to the final storage temperature, which is about 85 degrees C. As a note, we often inject stripping steam at the tower bottoms to get a slurry cut with a reasonable flash point compatible with the storage temperature. Please also note that we often implement one or two more pump rounds in this column. And in our case, we will consider two. This will lead to an extra 8 gigacalories per hour energy recovered. This energy can be used either to preheat the feed or to reboil the stripper or either to produce steam. Recovering calories in the tower leads to decrease the overhead condenser duty down to 22 gigacalories per hour. And here we are at the end of the description of the main fractionation operation. It's now time to see in the last video the destination of the cuts that have been produced in the main frac. In the meantime, do not hesitate to test your knowledge by answering the five questions of the quiz available in the description of the video. I also invite you to subscribe to my YouTube channel to keep you informed about the upcoming videos. See you very soon for the next part. Bye-bye!